Hello and welcome back to Bantech Systems and specifically welcome back to the Sneak Peek series. So we've not made a video in the Sneak Peek series for a while, definitely not made one like this where I'm talking over it. So this is a bit new, but we've got some very interesting things for signalers and for those who signal in VIP servers coming soon to Stepford County Railway. So let's just jump straight in and I'll show you the new manual signalling interface for Stepford County Railway. So there are a number of different factors that kind of um, fed into us creating this new system. One of those being that we wanted larger zones for signalers to control. Um, so the desks before just covered a, a quite a small space, um, which if it was a busy space that would be very, very interesting, but if it was sort of um, more towards the Lynn area and that kind of thing, there wouldn't be that much to do on the boards that you had. So to create that without having loads and loads of different screens around you that you'd have to be toggling between, um, we decided to go with a kind of a panning and zooming um, sort of thing so that you could zoom out and see the entire zone that you were covering on your screen, um, but could also zoom in um, right the way down to kind of uh, to have one or two stations on the screen. Now that wasn't the only factor that made us want to redo the system and so some other things that we received in feedback from signalers was they wanted more information um, just generally all around the board more information about the platforms more information about whether or not there was a dispatcher a guard where the trains were all that sort of thing so we've kind of built this whole system around information and just the signalers having everything that they need to be able to signal effectively whether that's a beginner who you know is just sort of changing signals one by one without much thought uh, in a VIP server for example or whether it's one of our experienced signalers who is very good at prioritizing different trains based on how late they are where they're going how, how fast they travel that kind of thing so I will show you each of these screens one at a time so let's start with the platform allocation screen so this one is very useful particularly because we have a panning display now and so there can be quite a few stations that are not on your screen so it's good to you know keep up to track with what's going on at all of these different stations uh, know if one needs your attention for example so as you can see we've got the station we've got the platform number for that station we've got its status whether it's vacant occupied you know ready to depart that kind of thing um, if there's a guard there when the train is uh, in the platform, if there's a dispatcher allocated to those uh, set of platforms that I'll show here, and uh, which zone it is. Now, the reason for the zone thing we'll come on to a little bit later with some of our future plans for the system, um, but currently we're in zone A, so it's showing us all of zone A at the moment. Now we can filter the station name, so for example if I just wanted to see ones with Stepford in the name, there we go, I've got Stepford Central and Victoria. Um, if I for example wanted to see Beachley, I can start typing that in and just see those. So that's also very useful particularly for large zones that will have a lot of different platforms. As you can see Stepford Central's got 15, so that takes up probably an entire page on its own, yeah. Um, now each platform that's not the only information that we can get. If we actually click on one, you can see it pops down and shows us a bit more. So if there's a train there, it will show you the time that that train is scheduled to depart from that platform. Um, and a little bit more information about the guard and the dispatcher. So it will show you the, the rank of the guard and the rank of the dispatcher that are currently allocated, just in case you needed to know that information. And then we've got these two different options for looking at the camera and looking at where it is on the network. So. I'll leave the camera for now, but let's just jump to the network, and you can see it selected it, it zoomed to that particular platform, uh, Beachley Platform 1, and it selected it. So that brings me on nicely to this next screen, which is the main network screen that you'll be using a lot of the time. And so here you've got different platforms, you've got the signals as well, you can see we get pop-ups for various different things uh, that we click on, and you'll also see the head code of trains based on where they are, which signal they're, they're waiting for um, around the place. So obviously we've not got any trains at the moment, but we'll show that in a little bit. Um, so again, if you click on the platform, it'll tell you B, 
bit of information about which platform it is. Uh, down here, driver any operation, that will change to dispatcher active, if there's a dispatcher there, and it will show um, if there's a guard as well, and if there's both, it will say that there's both. And again, the option to look at the camera. Um, same with the with the signals, but here we've got uh, very similar to the old display, where you've got the danger, caution and proceed options, and for a shunt signal, just uh, the danger and proceed. It will tell you what kind of signal it is as well, which is quite useful. So this is a three aspect signal. This one is a four aspect signal, but we can already tell that by the fact it's a, a double amber. And uh, here is a shunt signal. So it just gives you that little bit of extra information as well. And if we click on these three dots, it opens up this side panel. And here, again, we've got the controls down at the bottom. Um, but we've also got a visualization of what the signal looks like. So if I click on one of the double yellows, for example, you can see that's what the driver would kind of see in terms of the signal. Um, the shunt ones, obviously, we've had to kind of represent them a little bit differently, um, just because we couldn't really fit the, the shunt uh, kind of shape in there. Um, but that's similar to what you'll see on the driving hood when you're also driving, so at least that's familiar. Then we'll show what trains are perhaps waiting at that signal. So if there's a train that is um, waiting to pass the signal, perhaps it's danger or perhaps it's just on approach to the signal, it'll tell you a little bit of information about the train, it'll tell you kind of what the operator is, that sort of stuff. So we'll show that uh, in a bit as well when we get some trains on here. It also shows you the trains that are currently in the block. So. Um, we spoke about this a little bit on one of the behind the scenes videos on the new signalling system, but you can potentially have more than one train in a block, which sounds strange to start with, um, but let me see what kind of example we can do. So this signal here, C059, now if you think about this signal, it needs to be read if there's a train that's obviously heading this way and hasn't passed this signal yet, if there's a train going this way and hasn't passed this signal yet, or if a train has passed this signal and is crossing over. Now there could be a train that's come down this way and a train that's going over here at the same time because those two trains won't conflict with one another. However, they both cause this to be dangerous. So you'd have both of those trains in here and both of those need to clear from that block before that one can go to anything other than danger. Now if you've ever signaled with the old system, you've possibly seen danger lock which is where it forces you to be in danger, it won't let you select the other aspects. That's what happens when there's a train in the block. Okay, associated platform. Now, for ones that are platform signals, we now have a little bit of extra information where we've associated it with a particular platform. So in this case, City Hospital Platform 1. Um, and again, it's kind of just a shorthand for the stuff that's on the left screen, but it will just show you whether it's driver only, whether it's dispatcher, whether it's signaler. Um, and it just tells you the name of the platform basically. Now that will also change colour with the platform, we'll, we'll have a look at uh, how they change colour later as well. And yeah, I'll just show you, that, look how the different things are working and you can see it reflected up here, in the text here, on this pop-up and also down here. So there's lots of different places where you can see what a signal's doing. Um, hopefully helpful for people who have any kind of colour blindness as well. Um, particularly with the diagram up here, so that if they're ever unsure, they can see exactly which signal's there, and obviously it's written in text as well. Um, so there's that. Now I'll show you the camera whilst we're here. So we've added, uh, this is another feature that Signal has asked for, but we've added the ability to sort of CCTV style look at what's happening at each signal, and also each platform. And so if I click that, we go into this kind of CCTV mode where we've got quite a wide field of view and um, we've got this kind of old style CRT screen kind of vibe going on um, and you can also rotate it so that here we're looking back kind of what the signal is seeing I suppose and here we're seeing if we were a train approaching the signal what we might see. Um, that's useful for debugging perhaps if you if you think there's something wrong with the system uh, so it's very useful for us just to check that signals are changing to the correct aspect that we've selected. Um, but also it's useful if you just want to see what's going on at a particular signal. Um, there isn't very much information on the signaling display in terms of the actual movement of trains. All that we've managed to get is um, when a train is 
waiting for a particular signal, but you don't actually know that that train's moved until it's passed over this yellow AWS stopper. So having the ability to just look through the camera and see what's going on, why aren't they moving, I've given them a green signal, you know, you can just hop into this view and have a look. So let's close that. And let's now have a look at the third screen, which is the train list screen. And this, if there were trains in the game, it will have every train that is in the game on here. However, if it's outside of the, the area that you're controlling as a signaler, you might not want to see it. It might be a bit distracting. So you can select that and that will essentially filter the train so it only shows the ones that are in your zone. So then you've got the ID, which is the head code of the train. It'll show you its next stop, its status, which is uh, to do with timeliness. So it'll show you if it's on time, if it's a few minutes late, that kind of thing. Um, its final destination, the driver, and whether or not it has a guard, and then obviously the zone. Um, similar to the platform one, you can click on these and it'll show you more information. So we'll come back to that once we've got some trains. So I thought it'd be interesting to show you kind of the panning and the zooming. Um, so we're, we're making sure that this is going to be compatible for mobile and gamepad as well, sort of like Xbox controls. Um, whether or not you'd want to signal on Xbox itself is a different question because you can't actually chat on Xbox. Um, but if you, for example, plug an Xbox controller into your computer, you'll be able to use that. Now I've not set up all the signals for, for this part, obviously I've only set it up to Stepford Central just while we're still testing, but you can see this kind of blue outline around here. Um, now that is your signaling zone, and so we'll be splitting the map up into a load of different zones, um, and essentially you'll just see where the border for your particular zone is. Um, and I think we'll add some sort of more indicators to show you which side of that line is your zone, because obviously if you're quite zoomed in, for example, it's not necessarily obvious which side is, is your particular zone. Now signals outside of your zone, you'll be able to look at, you'll be able to see what they currently um, are in terms of their aspect and things like that. You'll be able to see what trains are waiting, who's in the block, all of that stuff you'll be able to see. You just won't be able to change the aspect of the signal with the controls. So it's quite similar to this one actually, it will show a, a, a label that says out of zone. Okay, so the reason why we've also done it like this, um, and this again was a bit of feedback from signalers and also some ideas from us, is that you, if you're a, a very experienced signaler, you might want to kind of preempt certain trains coming into your area and uh, set up the signals ready for those. So before, you would have to possibly jump off the desk, reset all the signals, look at the big board and see what's going on there, or you'd look at the old train list and hope that you can figure out where that train is and when it's going to be coming into your area. Now it's a lot easier because if you imagine the rest of the map being created here, you'll be able to see those trains approaching your area going through signal by signal um, and you'll be able to click on those trains as well and see more information about them, see what line they're on, see what route they're doing, you'll obviously see their head code so you'll see whether they are skipping certain stations or not. And so you'll be able to prepare your zone for that train to come into it. So that will be very useful. And finally the main control is obviously just this X button here which then just takes you back out of the desk and resets it all. Now one thing that we have seen that some people did mention is that you can't see the screen when you're not sat down. Now the reason for that is because there's a lot more going on on the screens now than there were before and we don't think it's necessary to run all of that programming on everyone's machines, um, especially because the majority of players won't be signalling in the live servers. So instead we've made it so that it only loads up the, the screens and does all of the scripting and everything like that when you actually sit down. Um, now obviously that means that it's harder for other people such as supervisors and things like that to necessarily see what you're doing on the screens. So one of the things that we're looking at creating and that is quite easy to create with the system that I've made is to potentially have um, tablets or little computer stations where you can simply see the entire network. You can't control any of it, but you can see the entire network. And that's where the zone display 
on the platform allocations will come into it because then you'll have every platform throughout the entire game on this screen and so obviously you need to know which zone it's in and they will be ordered by zone then ordered by station and then ordered by platform number so you can see it's alphabetical by station um, we could do location but that would require quite a lot of extra um, sort of tuning to work out what order we wanted those to display in so for the moment alphabetical but if uh, signalers tell us that they need it to be a little bit clearer or to be in a, a specific order we can always change that in the future or possibly add it as a toggleable option um, like we had on this screen with the showing trains in zone A. Okay so I'll show you what this looks like with um, sort of a driver only operation kind of example. So we're going to get Island Line to spawn at the beach sidings and drive through down here through City Hospital and I'll show you at City Hospital what it looks like in terms of when the platform's occupied, when they're ready to start, what it looks like if that's off your screen, like you've panned to somewhere else on the network, um, and what it looks like on these two side displays. So already we can see his trains appeared on the full train list, so I'll show you this first. Now this has got their depart time, their unit number, platform if they're allocated to a platform, which operator they're on, the driver, and the guard if present. Now you can see that there's no guard on here. You can see their destination, their next stop, their head code, and uh, unfortunately the rank isn't quite showing yet, but there will be a rank icon here. So you can see he's already arrived at City Hospital now, um, or is arriving. This platform will become occupied or allocated as you can see. And there we go, it's occupied now. So it's white, you can see it's occupied, but it is a driver only operation. You can see their depart time, but they've got no guard and no dispatcher. So we can take a quick look as well. We can have a look at the uh, associated platform here. You can see the expected departure again. You can now see the train that's waiting for that signal as well, with all the information. And if we view camera, there he is there. Now, I'll just set this to red to hold him for a moment. Now when they're ready to depart, you can see it's flashing yellow here. It's flashing yellow over on the full train list as well. And this has now gone yellow, saying they're ready to start, and it's flashing here. So hopefully no matter what screen you're on, you can see that. Now if they're off screen, you can see that a 1 has appeared in that corner. And if I zoom in so it's more directly below us, you can see a 1 has appeared there. Now that will count how many of those are ready to start that are off our screen and it sort of indicates where you need to pan to find them. Now if we wait a bit too long you can see it's now flashing red and that means that they are waiting quite a while now for us to depart them and uh, we should probably change their signal as a matter of priority if we can do. So we'll change that and we'll let them depart from there. Now you can see the head code changed to yellow along with the train list and that's because they've become one minute late because of how long I held them there. That will change to orange and then to red depending on how late they actually are. Okay, so while we're waiting for someone else to come and join us so we can show you what it looks like when there's a guard and a dispatcher for a particular departure, um, let's just show you on this platform allocations, if Island Line becomes the dispatcher at Beachley, you can see that they've filled all the platforms that they are dispatching here. So you can clearly see which of your platforms have a dispatcher and which don't. And again, that's displayed there, and once fixed, it'll have the, the rank icon next to it. And again, we can zoom to that on the network, and you can see that it says it has a dispatcher active, and that's, uh, that's island line there. So you can see the ones that don't still say driver only. The ones that do will say dispatcher active. Okay, so we've got a driver now. You can see he's just spawning at the moment. And I'll take this opportunity to show you what it looks like as a train's approaching a signal. So this will show up whenever they're waiting for a signal or on approach to it to pass through. So there it goes, the head code appears. Tells you the head code, the unit number, the operator, the destination, and the timeliness of that particular train. Now I believe this train is going to pick up a guard here at City Hospital before opening the doors. The guard has been picked up now, and you can see Island Line is the guard. And if we hop back over and click the platform, we can see that there's a guard active there. So when there's a guard active, you know that there will be some sort of dispatcher process. Whether there's a guard or a dispatcher, 
there will be some dispatch. So that's why it tells you whether there is a guard or a dispatcher or not. And there we go, the TLTS again flashing yellow. You can see it flashing yellow over here, over there. So then all we need to do, you can see as well, this, this goes yellow here to show you that the platform's ready to depart. And it says that there's a guard active below, which I think we need to make that a little bit more orange, but we can tweak that. And then if we change the signal to be proceed, I imagine that they will probably do the dispatch procedure. You can see the guard over there in the distance. The doors are closing. The signal's green for them. And off they go.